November 30th, 2016, at the ripe age of 30, I received a diagnosis that changed my life. I sat across the table from a kind woman with a Wisconsin accent at the University of Utah's Autism Spectrum Disorder Clinic, who started with a simple request. Tell me about your childhood. Over the next five hours, countless memories that I had repressed, thought I'd buried forever, and tried to run away from for my whole life came flooding back. With them came the familiar feelings of guilt, loneliness, pain, and shame that I had carried for as long as I could remember. I always sensed that I was different, but couldn't articulate what or how. Yet, I refused to believe I had any issues. If I could operate in my daily life, I reasoned that there must not be anything wrong with me. Despite this, I felt a brokenness that I attempted and failed to assuage through overachievement. Speech and debate, then politics, then graduate school. It was not until my son was diagnosed and I realized I was staring at a four-year-old version of myself that I put the pieces together. Even then, it still took months of stubbornness until I crashed altogether and all of the systems I had used to combat my executive dysfunction and convince myself I was not suffering stopped working altogether all of which led me to stop running and finally walk into this unadorned conference room with a nice woman from Wisconsin, willingly putting myself through a greatest hits album of my deepest anxieties in order to find closure. She opened the session warning me that it typically takes two to three weeks for a formal diagnosis to be sent, and it may not be what I expected. By the end, due to what others lovingly call my Ian-ness, she told me point blank, I am classically autistic. It was the answer I expected, but it still felt foreign, like saying I am autistic was coming out of someone else's mouth. That night, I went to my girlfriend's house. This all happened on her birthday, no less, and wept uncontrollably while she comforted me. Not out of sadness for who I am, but to comfort the lonely, awkward child that he was a good boy all along, and it was just misunderstood. He may not have had the past he deserved, but he could still have the future he always wanted. The following years have been a whirlwind. As I have understood myself better, so too have I worked with, rather than against, who I am and my various sensory and social needs. I was also very blessed to have supportive people along the way. My family, my friends, my graduate advisor, to name a few. Most of all, I am thankful for my girlfriend and our son, who are responsible for formally introducing me to this colorful world of weirdos and whose love inspires, drives, and fulfills me every day. I wouldn't be here, though, were it not for the amazing people in the autistic community, including the extended peep of autists on the interwebs, who made me feel welcome as one of their own without compromise, and for whom I continue to learn. I am proud to say I am autistic, although I still have much to learn and grow. Thankfully, I have been taught a lot by other autistic folks, some of which I want to pass along. If you are an, alt, an adult who is finally realizing you are autistic, here are some steps I would recommend as you begin your journey. Number one, be kind to your past self. I know, talking to the world's biggest group of overanalyzers, it's easier said than done. But know that you figured out your autism at the exact right time. We can't change the past or wonder what might have been if we had known earlier. But we can give ourselves a better future with the knowledge we have in the present. Be sure to comfort your past child who may have been bullied, mistreated, or ostracized that it wasn't your fault and that you don't have to carry any of that past guilt any longer. Number two, be humble. You are no more or less authentically autistic than the next person. A few months after I was diagnosed, I attended a summer institute with the Autistic Self-Advocacy Network. I was incredibly nervous, not only because I was older than most, but because I felt like an interloper. 
I hadn't known about my autism for nearly as long as these awesome young activists, so who the heck was I to be in their space? Thankfully, they were incredibly kind and taught me otherwise. Just because you went through most of your life so far not formally knowing you were autistic doesn't mean you weren't suffering. You were always a part of the community, you just didn't know it yet. Likewise, you don't need to be formally diagnosed to be actually autistic. Not everyone can afford the expensive diagnosis, and we shouldn't let physicians act as gatekeepers. If you've done your homework and believe it yourself, then you're in. It's as simple as that. It doesn't matter who is or isn't more really autistic. It's how you treat fellow autistic people and what you do with your diagnosis that matters. Number three, be eager to learn. You're new to the club, so you likely don't know everything yet. Even if you have an autistic child or loved one, it's different when becoming from a personal experience. The biggest key is knowing this and having the humility to know when to reach out and listen. There is a huge community of autistic people out there to connect with and learn from. Research key autistic people, some of whom I provided. Read some of the key texts that are linked here as well. There are tons of communities on social media to also connect with. And most of all, be sure to center voices of people who are actually autistic, not necessarily medical professionals or caretakers. They know the most about what you're going through. And be sure to read up on all autistic voices, including people who are nonverbal, people of color, and people who are gender nonconforming. And if you don't know, don't hesitate to ask respectfully. Number four, and lastly, be patient with yourself. You're starting an exciting, disorienting, and uncertain journey. You're not only coming to grips with your own sensory needs, but potentially unlearning years of behaviors that were drilled into you because it was normal, not because it was best for you. So take your time. Listen to your needs and be willing to make adjustments. You are going to learn so much about yourself and feeling disoriented or confused isn't a bug, but a feature when learning about your actual adult autistic self. I hope this helps you, because I learned these lessons through trial and a whole lot of error. And if you ever have a question, my door is always open. If you were like me, for my entire life, I kept trying to find a missing piece that would finally make me whole. At risk of sounding cliche, I finally realized my, and your completeness, was there all along.